Man, I've been doing this for... Listen, man. I've been in this game a long time. I'm not in it for a record. I'll tell you that. I'm not in it for a ring. It's when people get hurt. If we don't win the last game of the series, they'll dismiss us. Bill. I know these guys. I know the way they think. And they will erase us. And everything we've done here, none of it will matter. Any other team wins the World Series, good for them. But if we win, on our budget with this team, we'll change the game. And that's what I want. I want it to mean something. Yo, I make 10 or so minute videos, and within those videos, I want them to be as compact as possible so that what I say is heard correctly, and then you move on to the next one. I made a video recently where I think I may have messed that up. It was the Greg Glassman Liver King video, how they kind of are very similar individuals, and I touched on a lot of the content that Greg Glassman had been saying over the course of his tenure, how it was always the same. He had a message, and it's a catastrophe that we lost the person who built the thing that everyone loves so much, that being CrossFit, because through Greg Glassman, through what he created, all of us were brought together, and he was always the person who was like leading us down the path, and he's no longer there because he made a tweet. And after after that tweet, a whole bunch of other stuff happened to which there was nothing really backing it up. Uh, yeah, honestly, I, th I think it was the the movement to cancel Greg Glassman, and then there was the one with um. Why? Because you were like, "What's Floyd nineteen even mean?" And and, kind and, 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 of, and, and there's no substance here. Like, who, where where's the girl he raped? Or like, like yeah, you're like, I where's of, the? I just I'm like I I've, I've never seen like normally when you get accused of that kind of stuff like the women start popping out of it, like Cosby, like yeah. every woman yeah, that yeah, face yeah. was everywhere. Or, or Weinstein, they just yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. whatever. And I'm like, there's none of these, like what, where, yeah, where's the smoking gun? I didn't even understand what the article, who wrote the article or what the article was for or any of it. You can say whatever you want, but the case that I tried to make evident was the Deshaun Watson thing. It's like, there he is, here's 24 cases of what had happened as a result of that. 24 individuals come forward after Deshaun Watson is accused of doing things that weren't acceptable in massage parlors, and that is the way things should work. And when it came to Greg Glassman, there were some things that were said about him, and then you fast forward even to this point in time and there's nothing out there that I can find about what he has said or done because there probably isn't anything out there. Something that I said and I may have misspoken on was the verbiage of sorry. When I say sorry, at least me, it can come from a couple of different places. Number one, I'm sorry and I won't do that again because from where I stand, I think that it was incorrect to do it. I'm gonna do everything I can. If I'm Jeffrey Dahmer and I ate people and I said I'm sorry, I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna eat people anymore. Then there's also a version of Jeffrey Dahmer where you say sorry, but then you're also like, I'm sorry that you don't think that it's okay that I was eating people, but I'm going to continue eating people. That second one is tricky and in the case of Jeffrey Dahmer, that might actually be the case. And at which point anybody can look at that situation and go, dude, don't eat people. That's bad. And while Greg Glassman's case wasn't one of that, there are differing opinions on the topic that he was talking about. Because the thing that was thrust upon him is the racism issue. Everyone looks at a tweet. It says Floyd 19. Tensions are high. The world is in shambles. But in the case of Greg Glassman, when I said that I think he should have apologized or said, I'm sorry, it is more of a, hey guys, sorry that you see it that way. But the way that I see it is this. Could that have destroyed the entire company that is CrossFit? It could have because they were losing sponsors. Dad, there's there's no way you're going to lose your job, right? What? Where did you hear that? Well, like go on the internet sometimes. And... Well, don't do that. Don't don't go on the internet, watch TV or read newspapers or talk to people. Honey, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Really, you don't have to worry. But if I... you lose your job, will you have to move away? Honey, I'm not going to lose my job. You don't have to worry left and right the athletes weren't going to compete at the crossfit games which they did end up doing anyway but maybe it's because he sold the company but what i have for you is a handful of clips from one of my favorite movies paralleling what it's like when somebody in a position such as his goes out on a limb to do things that are uncommon for those people in such times movie is moneyball greg glassman is going to be portrayed by brad pitt and i'm going to be interjecting with commentary where i see fit let's go his girlfriend is a six at best. Look, if we're trying to replace the zombie, this guy could be it. Guys are just talking like this is business as usual. It's not. We're trying to solve the problem here, Billy. Not like this. You're not. You're not even looking at the problem. 
What's the problem? We all understand what the problem is. What's the problem? We have to replace three key players in our nope. lineup. We have existing. Nope. What's the problem, Barry? 20 RBIs and 47 doubles. To replace. There are rich teams and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap. And then there's us. It's an unfair game. And now we've been gutted. Boston's taking our kidneys. Yankees taking our heart. We got to think differently. We are the last dog at the bowl. You see what happens to the runt of the litter? He dies. Is there another first baseman like Giambi? No, not really. And if there was, could we afford him? Then what the fuck are you talking about, man? If we try to play like the Yankees in here, we will lose to the Yankees out there. Boy, that sounds like fortune cookie wisdom to me, Billy. No, that's just logic. Greg Glassman is being portrayed by Brad Pitt, who is acting as Billy Bean, the manager of the Oakland A's in the movie Moneyball. And maybe you don't know where I'm going with this, and maybe it was lost in his words and the cuts, but look at the way the entire room is looking at him. They're looking at him like he's freaking insane. There's only one way that you get to be the Greg Glassman's of the world. Maybe you can say it's the Liver Kings of the world. Maybe you can say it's the Steve Jobs or the Jeff Bezos or whomever's of the world. And that is if you have an idea that stems from a whole bunch of people looking at you the way that that table's looking at you. In a parallel universe where Greg Glassman comes out and he apologizes, but he doesn't do so saying he's never going to do it again. He comes out and he says, I'm sorry that you feel that way. This is what I meant. Maybe he doesn't even owe an explanation to anybody, but I think that it may have been a good idea to say, do you guys not see what's going on here? Is this not why you are here? This is where we came from. We are the Oakland Athletics. This is everything that we've ever done. All we ever do is go against the grain and think critically. We have to, we're gonna get killed out there. You want us to do the things that Nike's doing? You want us to do the things that Coca-Cola is doing? We can't do that stuff. You don't understand that this entire thing started from a place of scarcity? People were looking for something. They were yearning for something. We have gotta turn the tides. It's just common sense. No, that's just logic. He says right at the end of the clip. Who do you want to talk about first? None of them. Guys, you're still point. trying to replace Giambi. Told you we can't do it, and we can't do it. Now, what we might be able to do is recreate him. Recreate him in the aggregate. Do you want me to speak? When I point at you, yeah. 1092. Divided by three. 364. That's what we're looking for. Billy. That's just... Yeah. Who's that? That's Pete. Does Pete really need to be here? Yes, he does. Okay, here's who we want. Number one. Constantly varied. Billy, that's trouble. Jeez, Billy. Number two. Functional movements. Oh, no. Billy, Not a good job. idea, Billy. Old. Why do you like him? Because he gets on base. Okay, number three. High intensity. Who? Catterbird. Exactly. Oh. Sounds like an Oakland A already. I know Boston wants to cut him and no one wants to pick him up. That's good for us. He's cheap. He can't throw and he can't field. But what can he do? Guys. Check your reports or I'm gonna point at Pete. He gets on, get on base. base. He, gets on he get on base. So he walks a lot. He gets on base a lot. You're not gonna bring in one, but three defective players to replace Jump. This is the new direction of the Oakland A's. But we're gonna turn the odds on the casino. I think we have to remember, this is the man. He answers to no one except ownership and God. This is not a discussion. I think that's one thing you're forgetting here. None of those three guys knows how to play first base. You're gonna have to teach one of them. Teach? Which one? I've already brought up, I already brought up Mark Zuckerberg and Jeff Bezos and those sorts of people, the company masterminds who started the freaking Amazons and Facebooks of the world. At some point, they had something that they were going for. In the first clip, I said, look at how everybody's looking at him when he's saying what he's saying. If we try to compete against the Yankees at their own game, we're going to get killed by the Yankees at their own game. We gotta think differently. There was a point in time, and let's call it 2000, or probably just before 2000, there was the inception of what CrossFit was going to be. The question, Raymond, was what did you want to be? Constantly varied, functional movements performed at a high intensity. You could even take the clips from the people. You look at constantly varied, Billy, that's trouble. Billy, that's trouble. You can go throughout all the stupid literature since the dawn of time and everyone's gonna say, you need to have a linear program if you're gonna make any sort of progress. And then you go into a CrossFit gym, constantly vary all of the movements, maybe a little bit of progression, but progression is not the end all be all like some people would insist it was. People called Greg Glassman insane. It's like, that's never gonna work. Uh-huh, functional movements. It's like, oh no, that's a bad idea. Not it's a good idea, Billy. It's like, what? why do you like him? You like him because it's common sense. No, that's just 
just logic. You look at the way the body's made up, the bones, the tendons, the ligaments, the muscles, and it's supposed to work that way. It would be silly to not be using functional movements. High intensity. I know Boston wants to cut him and no one wants to pick him up. That's good for us, he's cheap. I know Boston wants to cut him and nobody wants to pick him up. You know why? LSD was the best thing ever at this point in time. Long, slow distance. Yeah, LSD and long, slow distance. They were both great. It's like, you want to work out? Go sit on the freaking treadmill uphill walking for 30 minutes. While it's still got its benefit, everyone would look at high intensity and say, oh, you're going to get hurt. Good luck doing that for a long period of time. And then it's like, oh, well, uh-huh. Is that how it turned out for you? Is that what you think? You think? Is that what you think? You think? And then at the end of the day, you hear what Billy Bean's saying. You just got to get him on base. Check your reports or I'm going to point at people. Get on base. Get on base. And what you hear Greg Glassman say is that it's a solution so elegant that it might be optimal. In elegance comes simplicity. And it's just so easy. But it's also insane how people just don't listen. What the hell was that? You knucklehead. How's Boston? Impressive. Did Henry make you a good offer at least? Doesn't matter. What was it? Doesn't matter. What was it? Doesn't matter. What was it? That makes you the highest paid GM in the history of sports. So? So what? You know, I made one decision in my life based on money. And I swore I would never do it again. You're not doing it for the money. No? No. You're doing it for what the money says. And it says what it says to any player that makes big money. That they're worth it. I really wanted to win here. I really did. I think you won pretty big, Billy. Pete, we lost. It's only been a few days. You got to give yourself some time to get over it. Man, I don't, I don't get over these things, ever. I believe the year was 2021 when the NSEA case against CrossFit had been closed. I think the Morning Chalk Up posted the article on that. The reason that that is worth mentioning is because from what I understand, Greg Glassman did everything in his power to continuously put the NSEA into the dirt. They were fudging results. It was proven that they were fudged. They were trying to say that CrossFit and CrossFit gyms, the methodology and the places pumping the methodology were hurting people. Greg Glassman was at the top of everything and rather than taking the money, Everything that he did was to continue doing the best by all means necessary. I really wanted to win here. I really did. I would say that in my opinion, that was the first instance where he did the opposite of what Brad Pitt, Billy Bean did in his scenario. Brad Pitt was coming up through the minors and he was given this massive contract and he went directly from high school into the majors. He skipped college. He wishes he would have played in college. For a long period of his life, he was thinking, God, if I hadn't had taken that money, I would have been able to have gone to college, gotten an education. And the entire back and forth battle that he's playing with himself here in the entire movie, the things that he is doing. I may lose my job, in which case I'm a 44 year old guy with a high school diploma and a daughter I'd like to be able to send to college. You're 25 years old with a degree from Yale and a pretty impressive apprenticeship. I don't think we're asking the right question. I think the question we should be asking is, do you believe in this thing or not? Put his entire life in jeopardy. He's got a daughter. Because he's doing what he's doing with the A's, taking these huge risks and going against the grain, all I can think is that if he had just gone to college, he would not be in this position. He'd be living the comfy life where he can make the whatever amount of money he needs to make to live with his daughter. But he's got a mission. A mission that people don't understand. We've talked about that. In Greg's world, it was constantly varied functional movements performed at a high intensity. People didn't get it. Like, why would anyone go to a cheapo, grungy gym with some person who didn't even graduate high school? And the answer always comes down to because it works and they care. And he cared. He cared about every single affiliate in the freaking world. He cared about what it stood for. He cared about why they were so invested into the methodology he put together. He goes, if you put your neck out for me the way nobody else would when this thing started up, then I'm going to put my neck out for you. And you could see it through the NSCA case. And you could understand that that thing closed after he left the company for God knows what reason. But this is what happened when round two comes along for Brad Pitt. Why I'm just a little girl lost in the moment. I'm so scared, but I don't and just enjoy the show. Dum de dum. Just enjoy the show. You're such a loser, Dad. You're such a loser, Dad. It's interesting. Almost a year ago, I make a video about how it wasn't CrossFit that fired Greg Glassman. It was us who fired Greg Glassman. Greg Glassman's baby and Dave Castro's baby. And they just got ripped the frick out of the world by us. And I'm not going to say me because I didn't do it. 
But Greg Glassman, he could say whatever he wants, just like I'm currently saying whatever I want. And he may have tweeted something that wasn't the smartest, but as we get further and further away from it, you see that it wasn't, like, completely untrue. You see that the, that Floyd 19 tweet was, like, it wasn't racist. It was just connecting the dots, but he did it like that. It looked to me like he was connecting the dots. And if you want to call me a racist for saying that, then I'm not. Okay? But <clears throat> everyone got on his back, and the, us, the people, kicked him out because no one's going to do CrossFit anymore. We're de-affiliating. We're out. Hey, I'm Catherine David's daughter. I'm out. I'm Noel Olson. I'm out. It's like, all right. Well, if it weren't for Greg Glassman, you wouldn't have any reason to say that you're out. Who the hell do you think you are? It's like he is the one who, since 2000, has been living, breathing, eating, and pushing the good word of CrossFit. And now because he tweeted something where he's just connecting the dots on a platform where you can say whatever you want, and he's genuine, you're going to kill him. You killed Jesus. That's a, that's a Sevan qu quote. You killed your Jesus. And I believe it. It's like, yeah, you guys killed your Jesus. And he tweets, everyone comes and jumps on him. Jumps on the guy who's putting out the company like the NSCA, who's trying to come after the affiliates. Coming after the guy who has the Brad Pitt Billy Bean head on his shoulders. He has a vision. He knows where everything's going. He sees things from a lens that many people, like the one sitting at that table, don't see it as. The entire table jumps on him. And this time around, unlike Billy Bean, who rejected the Red Sox offer, Greg Glassman takes it you're not doing it for the money you're doing it for what the money says and it says what it says to any player that makes big money that they're worth it somewhere like 200 million dollars i saw and at the beginning of this video or somewhere in the middle of it i talked about a parallel universe where greg glassman doesn't accept that money he does what billy bean does and he continues to go with the oakland athletics and is still looking to win the final game of the season of course if you've seen the movie moneyball you'll know that the red sox a year or two after that contract is turned down by brad pitt billy bean they do win the world series using the exact methods which in the movie were the on base percentage does he get on base does he get on base and then the interesting thing about this current point in time is when are those exact methods going to come back to crossfit right now is the answer ever is there going to be something else that pops up that is going to be similar to what greg glassman always did which is he would always just shoot from the hip tell you how it is without really caring about whatever he was going to say he was unapologetic to a fault and where i said maybe he should say sorry that everyone had even felt that way, he didn't say shit. It turned into a parade of putting out fires left and right. Those fires, of course, were ignited by the media. The way people can hear those things, and the way social media can then portray things, and the way the athletes would jump on him. And it's like, oh my god, you're burning down the entire thing that you've built. It's like, do you not understand how this thing was freaking built? I'm sorry that you feel that that's what I meant, but I wasn't trying to be racist. I'm sorry that that's how you feel. That's what I meant in the other video. Perhaps that's what he should have done. But in all reality, he doesn't have to say shit. Brad Pitt in this movie tells you why it's gonna work over and over and over again, but still, nobody understood. Greg Glassman could have said, I'm sorry you feel that way. Maybe you should look inside and understand why it is that you think that I am saying racist things when in all reality, he wasn't. That tweet is not a racist tweet, but Greg Glassman still is out there trying to win the last game of the season. It's just a shame that he's no longer doing it along with all of us. It's really a shame. And I'm still waiting to see if that ever comes back. Well, right now it looks like we're playing for the Yankees, but we're just not making $40 million a year. And Riller, out.